Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. <laughs> it is Sunday and uh, today this kitchen has already seen soup being made, um, roasted potatoes, salad, all kinds of things have already occurred in this kitchen. However, I was not home for any of it. <laughs> so um, tonight I am going to be making uh, salmon patties and a salmon dish that my grandmother always made as I was growing up, along with um, some just like good old convenience uh, potatoes au gratin. I was challenged in one of my last video comments to do something with canned salmon and with potatoes um, out of a, a box. So that's what we're doing tonight. All of these things were already in my pantry. I'm about to get those started, but I wanted to uh, just ask you all, um, do you do this too? Because every weekend that rolls around, I say, we're gonna take it easy this weekend. We're gonna relax this weekend. We're not gonna do a whole lot this weekend. And then you do all of the things. <laughs> By the time you see this video, um, you'll have already seen all the others, but we went and we bought trees, we got soil for the garden, we got cattle panel, trellis um, for the garden as well. We had a seed hall. Um, I know I'm forgetting things in here. We um, started our restock the, the pantry um, video series. I mean, we have been going, 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 going. So it is now five o'clock on Sunday and um, we're going to get dinner done. But I was just curious, do you all do the same thing too? It's where you're going to rest and you just do more than you do during the week. Um, but anyway, let's get to it. Well, you all know if you've been around here for more than five minutes that I cannot follow a uh, instruction, recipe, anything to the T um, to save my life. I have to jazz it up and do my own thing. And today's not going to be any different. So I started this with the intention of just following the box recipes. And uh, for the most part, I am, that's my microwave. For the most part, I am going to follow them. However, I still feel like I could elevate this slightly. Oop, getting it all over already. So to do that, um, we are going to put in here a little bit of our spicy ranch seasoning blend. I'm going to say two heaping spoons. This is not a recipe. Um, we're going to put a little bit of chive in here. Chive and potato always goes good together. And of course, some parsley. Already looks better. So this is supposed to have the liquids all mixed into it. Let me grab that. I heated our milk and our butter just slightly. Um, and then from here, we're supposed to mix in boiling water. So the water is on the stove. I am making this for a, you know, large family, family of six. So this is three of those boxes. And this is with the intention of having some leftover for lunch as well. So don't freak out when you see the portions. Yes, that's a whole stick of butter. We have our boiling water. I'm gonna carefully put this in. I am making this in the largest cast iron casserole that I own. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's a different kind of shape, as you see. I mean, it's a square, but it's tapered. Um, it's the only kind like this that I've, I've seen. And this was a gift from Zachary. Putting in our potatoes. And then this goes in the oven at 450 degrees. According to the box, it gets baked uncovered for 25 minutes or until the top is a light brown and potatoes are tender. So while this is baking, I am going to get my salmon patties 
um, going and also the other salmon dish that I am making. So in the oven this goes. Have you all noticed that I'm a complete tornado in the kitchen? I leave a trail of mess, <laughs> as you see. So on to the next step. The thought has crossed my mind that this may be something good to share with you all, um, because I think that canned salmon can be kind of intimidating to people if they've never used it before. And I say that because as it comes, if you get it like this, like the whole wild, this is wild Alaskan pink salmon. Um, this is essentially like an actual like fish piece that you're getting. So it's not like canned tuna where you're just taking it out and it's just straight out of the, the can. Here you sometimes have bones in your, your salmon. Now these are extremely soft from being canned and processed. So if you're making something like a salmon patty, I mean, use your own discretion, but you can get away with leaving it in. However, texturally, it might not be a favorite. So I thought that this would be great to share with you all. It just, these are our bones. They came right out. Some of this also has some skin on it. And again, you could leave that. Um, but if you know that you're, you know, you're not fond of that or your family may not love that, feel free to remove it. Again, more bones. But this is very easy to do. And by going through it like this, you are able to find and feel all of those pieces. Now this one was a deep sea I'm not sure the brand of this one is a chicken of the sea pink salmon and it says traditional style so like i mentioned it is the full piece with some skin on it and there's the bones so we're going to pull those bones out Just gonna go through here again, personally, to make sure that I am not really missing anything. I think we got everything. So let me just give y'all a glimpse into my brain, because I know I just told you about every weekend that comes around, I say I'm going to rest, and I don't. So my phone died as I was um, explaining about the salmon, so I figured I couldn't continue on without you all. So I put my phone on the charger for a few minutes, but in the meantime, I had a few idle moments and I thought, hmm, I bet cornbread would be good with this. So I broke out, um, this is my favorite mix for cornbread is the crusties. But again, you know, I can't follow recipe. So I make this with some cream corn. I use instead of a um, oil, a vegetable oil or a butter, I use virgin coconut oil. This is an organic one that's from Sam's, it's my favorite. So I've melted that, I'm mixing that in, and I have a hot um, cast iron skillet that has been heating up while I was waiting for my phone to charge up a little bit. You can tell it's been a fun, um, busy weekend when my phone is um, dying. Okay, so we just mix that up. We add two eggs into this. Oh, well, there's a dog yet in treat right now since my whisk just flipped. We'll just have to get a new whisk. We'll go back to the trusty Danish. One. And two. Now the recipe only calls for one, but since I am adding more liquid in here with the cream corn, I am doing two. This is one of Zachary's favorite 
you know, kind of like convenience baked good things that I make. So we are going to put this in our hot cast iron and we're going to get it in the oven. All right, so cast iron here is red hot. Going in. I had it um, greased, I guess you could call it, with, with butter. And then this is going to go right in the oven with our scallop potatoes and cook while we make the salmon patties. We also decided that we were going to have some corn. I guess that's what got me in the mindset of making the cornbread. So we are steaming in there and we're going to put this right in. Right, so like most things that I make, I, I don't have a very specific set recipe that I'm following for this, but we're going to put some parsley in here. We are going to put a little bit of chive. Chive is always good. We are going to put a lot of dill. Touch of Old Bay, always good measure. If you know, you know. A little bit of lemon pepper. Give it that nice citrus easing. And we are going to put in here some Dijon mustard. We are also going to be opening a little bit, nice pop. Um, some of our sweet pepper relish is gonna go in here. I'd say that was like a, two tablespoons maybe. And the rest of our chopped onion. Chopped onion. Also need breadcrumbs and two eggs. So I am actually going to be using plain um, panko breadcrumbs for this. I don't use these too often. As you see, I'm just opening it. So we're going to put some panko in there. They have a nice crunch to them. Our egg. I'm actually going to start with one and see if I, if I need two. We may or may not add. But I am going to put some I'm going to put the remaining bit of our Parmesan Parmesan cheese in there. And we're going to mix this up and form patties. Okay, so this one little salmon dish that I'm making, this is mainly at the request of my grandmother. This is something that she made when I was growing up. It's just that canned salmon. It is a little bit of fresh onion. Normally she would have done rings and kind of layered this, um, but it is that with some parsley. We have dried parsley to work with. And then on top of that, we're going to put some white vinegar. White vinegar on here. Just like that. And this meal. So this has a little bit of nostalgia to it. Um, but my grandmother kind of requested this. So this is specifically for her. And we're going to move on to our salmon patties. A new angle so you can all see what I'm doing here. I have some mayo here. We're going to make a quick little um, drizzle sauce for our salmon patties. We're going to put some Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning in here. We are going to put a little bit of garlic salt. 
also lemon pepper. For some of this, we're mimicking the flavor profile that is in the patties themselves. Some Old Bay, but we're going to amplify it. Some Old Bay. Can't forget our dill. And we are going to add some more of our Dijon mustard. I'm pretty much going to finish this off by the end of the night. A little pickle juice. There we go. A little pickle juice. No actual relish or anything, just about two. I'm going to say maybe three tablespoons of, of pickle juice. I'm popping open our Hungarian, where are we? I want to make sure you can see that real good. Our hot Hungarian wax pepper hot sauce. Popping a new one of these open. This will give it a nice zing. Look at how thick that hot sauce is. It looks so good. Okay, so we're going to take a new spoon here. I'm going to say this is about, in total, about a tablespoon. I might add more after I see how spicy that is. And some, I don't know, I'd say that's maybe two, maybe a tablespoon and a half of garlic. I could absolutely put fresh minced garlic in, but okay, we're doing this quick. Whisk that all together. It looks good. And I'm going to give it a taste. Well, that definitely needs to sit and come together a little bit, but I am going to put two more of these in. And then I'm going to toss this into the fridge to chill and allow it to do its thing. And we have a delicious homemade, I believe you would pronounce this remoulade, um, just a little drizzle sauce to go on our salmon patties. But look how good that looks. Took us, what, a minute? Cornbread and our potatoes are ready. Here are our scalloped potatoes. They look so good. And our ooh, hot, hot cornbread. And this I need to quickly give it a little drizzle of honey right over the top. Looks good. Okay, and just that fast, it is time to get our salmon patties in. I have some butter here heated up. Don't do this barehanded. Don't do what I'm doing. We're going to put those in. I'm actually going to bump that heat a little bit. Now, as you saw, as I was making the patties, I formed the patty and then I put it in a little bit more of the panko breadcrumb to give it that nice, crispy exterior. Canned salmon obviously is fully cooked, so you do not have to, you know, worry about that, but you just do want to heat these thoroughly enough with the egg in there. Give them a little push. Let it form a crust on one side before I flip it. 
and I'm going to start cleaning up my mess. All right, now we're going to get these flipped. These look really good. Just about time to get everything plated up. I just wanted to share with you all a close up of the salmon patties. This is the second round in and I did do a little bit more butter in the pan this time just to give it more of a, a fry, um, like a wet fry. So there's those. We have our corn side in the back. Oh, look at how good that corn bread looks with the little honey drizzle on the top. And then we have our scalloped potatoes, which we really jazzed them up a bit. I also have in the air fryer, oh, we can't forget the, the drizzle sauce. We also have in the air fryer some salmon patties going as well. Here's the first round. Zachary, as you see, stole one. Um, so obviously they're good. Um, but in the air fryer, I have some salmon patties going as well to see how that turned. You know, you do not realize how much you say certain phrases until you are recording yourself every day. So as I always say, that escalated quickly. Um, we have our salmon, our potatoes, our gratin, our drizzle sauce, cornbread. These are the air fryer salmon patties. And I say these came out quite a bit different than the pan fried. Here it looks more like a breaded kind of, think of like a crab cake. Um, and then these are our pan fried salmon patties and the corn. So again, I think I'll be trampled if I don't hurry up here. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Happy Monday, everyone. It is just about eight o'clock and I just got home from driving two hours round trip to pick up a tractor tire. So homesteading problems. But I figured while I was out, I would make our quick stop at Aldi. Um, I ended up spending $24.95. I can't stand how filthy my oven looks, even though I just wiped it down. But um, $24.95. This includes our broccoli, spinach, milk, pineapple juice, Parmesan cheese, heavy whipping cream, and two um, tiger tail sauces. These are for Super Bowl. Um, so I really shouldn't even count those into this, but they're on there. So $24.95 we spent. The girls specifically requested it that I make my Alfredo. Um, so that is what the majority of this is going to be used for. And I'm going to bring you along for the ride. Well, I am not quite sure how I missed this, but we don't have any fettuccine or linguine. We have lots of spaghetti and we have angel hair, but no fettuccine or linguine. So we are going to have one of our favorite pasta shapes, a uh, little spiral twisty. This holds the sauce really good. And I am also going to use some of our canned herbed ugly chicken. Um, so let's get this in the pan. And the secret to making this quick is making your pasta and your broccoli together in the same pot. I got it. All right, so I am doing this quick, fast, and in a hurry. So this is not going to be the most um, informational, but I'm going to share with you what I'm doing. So we have some onion, just choppity chopping this up. This is the small chop setting, so it's more of a dice. It's about a half of an onion. Right now I have some garlic infused oil heating up, and I'm also going to add into here some fresh garlic. You can use jarred minced garlic, but it is not going to have the, the same effect. 
And you want your Alfredo garlicky. I mean, at least we do. I plan on having um, some spinach in mine, um, and the girls, they're not fond of, of warm spinach, of wilted spinach, so they asked for the broccoli. They love broccoli. We have our... We have our onion and our garlic. We have the garlic oil um, heating up. I am going to put in some butter into the pan as well. I'm going to get our pasta in. We're going to let that come back up to a boil and we are going to get our broccoli in there. I'm going to put a little bit of our herb chicken um, broth in here for some extra flavor. And set that to the side. Back up to a boil. And I'm going to add the broccoli. The onions and garlic. You have to get in there some Italian seasoning. We're going to throw in here some Italian seasoning. There's lots of great um, Alfredo recipes out on the internet that you can absolutely look up. We're also going to do some crushed um, red pepper flakes. I'm going to turn this down. Now we are going to put in our heavy whipping cream. Don't freak out about my portions because remember this is for, it's for a large family and leftovers for lunches. We're gonna get our herb chicken in our skillet. Did add some garlic powder and onion powder to my sauce. Now I'm going to slowly whisk in the Parmesan. I haven't charged my pepper grinder yet, so I'm going to put a little bit of regular black pepper. And we have less than a minute on our pasta yet.
Before I drain the pasta, I am going to take a little scoop of this for all of that good starchy pasta water right in there. Pasta is done now. Drain that. Zachary, can you have Mookie come in there so I don't burn him? Or, and Dakota. And broccoli. And in it goes. I'm going to combine that. Now our chicken's crisping up. All right, here is our broccoli alfredo pasta here we have the spinach alfredo pasta which i put a drizzle of balsamic glaze and our home grown and home dried sun-dried tomatoes with um, italian seasoning on them and then we have our crisped up herb garlic chicken to top whichever everyone decides to have. So that's it, guys. Uh, it took me 40 minutes, 40 minutes, including filming, to do this. So let's see which I try first. Whichever one you'd like. This one looks the most delicious. Wait, now tell everyone why you're so rough on Alfredo. <laughs> I'm rough on Alfredo because I used to work at the Olive Garden back in the day, and I memorized the Alfredo recipe. So if any of you have ever had Olive Garden Alfredo, you know that that's probably the standard for Alfredo. So that's why I have a high standard for Alfredo. But whose is your favorite? Whose is my favorite? Mine. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Mine and then yours. Oh, well. You'll have to make yours for everyone. That's good. That's very good. Let's try this one with the balsamic and the sun-dried tomatoes. Sorry guys, we were interrupted by the rude dogs. So, what would you say, Zachary? This one is really good. Those are our sun-dried tomatoes. I love that. I love the sun-dried tomatoes and the balsamic addition on that very good and this is your ugly chicken my ugly chicken with the herb garlic blend that's good good yeah took me 40 minutes from start to finish do all of this, including them. <laughs> I always know when he likes it when he goes back for a second bite. 
Good. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, I don't have much to share today. It is Wednesday and Miss Mama is sick, so we had some of our canned chicken noodle soup. Thankful to have these things on the shelf when we're under the weather. See you tomorrow. Tonight is Thursday and I am making some split chicken breast. So I am gonna grab out of here some vinaigrette or Italian. I think I'm gonna go with some Newman's Own. Um, Italian. We're going to put that on with some seasoning, throw it in the oven, and we're going to get it going. Here's proof. He does come into the kitchen to cook occasionally. What are you making, Zachary? We picked up a, um, I forgot what it's called. It's, it kind of looks like a warty pumpkin. I, fe I feel like it's days. Desaline or something, desaline or something like that. Uh, winter squash. Um, so we're cleaning the seeds out and we cut it up into chunks and we're gonna bake it. So we'll see how that is. And then we have a classic acorn squash to go with it, just in case this one isn't so good. But I got a feeling it's gonna be good. So. Looking forward to trying it. Lena, what are you making? Egg and cheese. Baked? Yeah. To go with our baked chicken? Yeah. Kind of different for me to be on this side of the, the island while everyone's cooking. Going in the oven and the chicken is just getting there, so. And we have Lena's mac and cheese all right we have angelina's baked mac and cheese zachary's roasted squash and oven roasted chicken about to dig in we'll see you tomorrow hi guys it's friday night and i am feeling better so um i am going to make a quick dinner uh, essentially just for me and zachary tonight everyone's often about doing their own things uh, but we are making pasta and we are upcycling essentially last night's dinner. We have squash, the tower of squash that I just <laughs> scooped out. We have diced chicken. We also have the broth that I saved that we're gonna um, add in. We have some caramelized onion jam, some diced random onion. We have a little bit of Parmesan cheese that I found in the freezer. And we have our favorite pasta, the radiator shaped pasta that we are going to use. So we're gonna make a little butternut ish squash pasta. I have the water boiling and I'm going to get the pasta in and I'm going to bring you over here for the rest. So this is the drippings and essentially congealed broth from yesterday's chicken bake. Put a little bit in the pasta water to give that some good flavor for the pasta. Got a little smoky. I'll put in pasta, eyeballing here how much we're actually putting in. I think that'll be enough. We're gonna let that come back up to a boil and we are gonna start over here building our flavors. See how long it takes me to make this. So in we have our onion, which that's not very hot yet now, is it? Not very hot. We have a little bit of butter.
All right, so we are sweating. We are sweating our onions. We're gonna put in a little bit of sea salt. A little bit of our dried sage. I'm going to put in some garlic, a lot of garlic. No vampires will be getting us tonight. What do you think, Zachary? A little crushed red pepper? Give it a little zing? Yes. Is the answer ever no to crushed red pepper? <laughs> I didn't think so. Keep it spicy. I'm actually going to put a little bit more of our good pan drippings from yesterday. So much good flavor in there. Some of our always delicious caramelized onion jam. This is such a good ingredient by itself as a topper, as a good mix in to build flavor and create a good umami base. We are also going to put in our leftover squash. Just going to break this up real good. Ooh, that's hot. All right, so another change. The recipe calls for broth, but I put in all of that good base of the pan drippings. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more. We may end up using all of this. We shall see. But instead of broth, I am going to put in some milk here and give this a good creamy kick. Look at how nicely that's coming together. The way that we cook the pasta doesn't even need to be drained. There's barely any liquid left. So we're going to mix in our chicken first. Get that in the sink right away. I'm going to come in with a little bit of our chopped random cheese and a little bit of Parmesan and see what kind of consistency that gives us before mixing in the pasta. Now I absolutely could have shredded that cheese, but it was easy to just toss it in like that. So, oh, hot pasta. Right in our pasta goes with all that good pasta starchy water to bring this all together. Makes your sauce really stick to the, the noodles. Going to do just a little bit more milk.
This took after chopping up the chicken and everything, you know, that little bit of prep work beforehand, which I would say that was about five, 10 minutes that took me. It only took 10 minutes to actually make this on the stove. So let's see. I think we might be able to get a taste test from Zachary. All right, doggies. You ready for a taste test? You ready for a taste test, Moogie? I am. You ready for a taste test, Dakota? Wow, wow. This looks delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-huh. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh. All right. Well, we're going to get some squash. We'll get a nice piece of chicken in there. And we'll get some pasta in there. Some sauce. Your mouth can be big enough for that bite. <laughs> I don't know, but it's hot, so yeah. I don't want to burn myself. Maybe I can let it cool for a second. So while Zachary is letting his pasta cool, I just want to jump to this side of the camera <laughs> and let you all know that tonight's dinner is going to be the end of this video. Only because, oh, you're dropping. Did I shock wow. you? <laughs> only because tomorrow is Saturday and we're going to be having our live um, video chat with everyone. So by the time this is, by the time you see this, that will probably have happened. But we're going to have our live video chat and then Sunday is Super Bowl. Go Eagles! Um, so we will be having a big Super Bowl spread, which that is obviously outside of the pantry challenge. Um, but we have lots to share with you and that's going to be its own video as well. We're going to be having wings, homemade boneless wings, um, caramelized onion dip, hot pepper, pepper popper, popper dip. dip. <laughs> uh, what am I forgetting? Oh, buffalo chicken dip using our canned chicken, um, beer, beer cheese, beer and, cheese pretzel. and pretzels if Angelina decides to make them, um, cinnamon buns, pasta salad. I mean, we are having a spread. So that will be its own individual video. It's going to be the party video. So I just want to let you know that that'll be all for this week. I mean, we've made it through another week of the pantry challenge, week six um, in the books, and we're going to continue on. And next week is a whole other story in itself with it. It's Valentine's Day. Mm. Maybe Zachary will come over to this side and cook. Maybe. Or maybe we'll go out. We'll see. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to thank you as usual for watching, and I will let Zachary have his taste test. All right, here we go. Mm. That's really good. Very good. What are your thoughts? I love the, the squash taste. I love squash. <laughs> I'm so glad that we're planning on growing a lot of winter squash this year. Because I love it. Mm. Good? Mm-hmm. All right, guys, well, it's time for me to have a seat and have some of this. But as usual, we thank you so much for watching. And we are sending you all lots of love for Valentine's Day. I'm sure you'll have some interaction with us before then. But we thank you. And we hope you have lots of love on your special days. Yep. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next.